Hello and welcome to episode 4 billion of Ask a Brit. I'm losing track at this point. It's 47. Um, rather easy if you just look at the numbers. Um, and of course, this is the format in which I ask you fine people to ask me any question you like, so long as it fits in the theme that was laid out in last week's episode and you use the hashtag Ask a Brit. And so this week's uh, theme, of course, as laid out, as I said in last week's episode, is British food. And we got a lot of questions from you fine people. Anywho, let's kick things off then today with the most important meal of the day. Weirdly enough, we only had one question around sort of breakfast ideas, I believe. Uh, and that question comes from Julie Anderson. And Julie asks, do you still or have you ever enjoyed the beans that are a staple in an all full English breakfast and on toast? Uh, so, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, I wouldn't be an Englishman without it, although I am one of those people that has confessed to not really liking tea all that much. Although I have changed my tune recently on that a little bit um but as for yes beans i mean gosh I, I eat so many beans i mean just ask my wife when i wake up the next day beans beans on toast um if you if you've not seen it i actually did a video on how to make beans on toast it was kind of a, a sort of tongue-in-cheek video because obviously it's, it's it's easy to make beans on toast but i, I thought that uh, americans nonetheless um, could do with the recipe as well as the, uh, the the methods by which to make it and speaking of americans that brings us on to our next section so of course being a british immigrant in america it was only natural that a lot of you would ask me questions about uh, trying to find specific british items in the us the first of those questions comes today from the ghost of a gamer who asks i'm british and would like to know how easy or hard it is to get a full english breakfast uh, with all of the trimmings over in the US. Well, you're not going to find it in most of your restaurants or pubs. I mean, it's something that, on the whole, you'd have to make yourself. There are exceptions. I think that I have encountered the odd, sometimes particularly odd, establishment um, that will make it for you. But on the whole, you, you have to um, make do yourself. And as I said, you know, in the, in the previous entry, um, I'm rather partial to beans. At any one time, we keep about four or five tins under the cupboard. Yeah, it's a little hard to find, but some, some places will specialize in it. Next question comes from Kirsten Wright, uh, who asks, have you ever been uh, given the wrong food item when you asked for something in the US using the British term for the item? Yes, I have. I remember, what was it, it was a few years ago, many years ago now, I think about six or seven, I was in, we were in some establishment, I don't even remember the name of it, might have been Montana Mike's, but I asked for a burger and chips, right, and that was on the menu, um, and even though I'm quite aware that Americans use the term fries instead of chips, um, for some reason I just, I assumed, because it's a burger, you know, burgers usually do come with chips slash fries, that it would be what I imagined it to be, and it wasn't. It was potato chips, ready salted, um, plain, or whatever. original, that's what Americans call them. And it wasn't quite as fun, you know, or at least it wasn't what I was, I was expecting. I didn't complain. Uh, to be fair to them, what was on the tin was exactly what I got. Um, it was just lost in translation. Uh, so the next question comes from uh, S. Murphy, or is it Smurphy? I don't know. Um, S. Murphy asks, uh, what American foods have you had that remind you of home? Uh, probably the beans that we keep in the cupboard. They're not Heinz. Uh, you can get those here, but they're actually more expensive uh, to purchase. We have Bush's beans. That they're vegetarian beans, um, but they taste not dissimilar to the Heinz version. Now, uh, I believe we were introduced recently to a version that was even more uh, closely aligned with those Heinz beans, and I've forgotten the name of it, so I should look that up, but um, they, they're they bloody good. So, yeah, I mean, occasionally you will find that. I think American food does have some marked differences from, from British food. Um, they put sauce on everything, and cinnamon. So, I don't know what that's all about. Haven't really acquired a taste for the latter, uh, although the former um, is growing on me, not literally. Uh, next question from Mark Old Geezer. Uh, Mark asks, is there any British food that you make at home or that Tara makes for you because you can't find it in America? I make all of my own food, don't I, wife? No. That is, come on, I did it the other day, I did. I'm making did. Yorkshire pudding. Yes, Yorkshire pudding is the real answer. I've, I, in, in all honesty, I do know how to cook and I don't just make Tara make all of my food. It's not like that. Um, but she does do a mean Yorkshire pudding, and I mean that in a nice way. It's not a Yorkshire pudding that comes and attacks you with a knife. You know, I've had those. And sausage rolls. And sausage rolls, 
because now I'm no longer a vegetarian. More on that in my next health update. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I would say Yorkshire puddings and sausage rolls are the big two, or have been historically. And speaking of pudding, let's now skip on to dessert, because why not? Yes, pudding. Pudding, of course, in the UK is routinely used as a form of dessert, or in fact, to refer to the meal that is dessert. We also do use the term dessert, but on that very line, uh, those very lines, that is multiple, plural, uh, Deco Cards, great name, YouTube name of the week, uh, asks, tell me about puddings. Where did that originate from? I think just sort of through observation over time, I believe a lot of the puddings that we know and love in the UK emerged during the Victorian age. Uh, one of those is Spotted Dick. So I, I can't help it, all right? I am immature and it will never, ever end. But puddings, I mean, I'm not entirely certain of the complete um, origin of, of, of puddings as a dessert. But I'm glad you asked about that. I think that would make a, a pretty good uh, video, perhaps for the, uh, the history portion of, of things that I do now, um, to look into that and look at the evolution, evolution, of puddings in the UK. Um, and one such uh, pudding, in fact, is referenced in our next question from Gloria uh, Stroydecker. I think, maybe. Uh, looks like a, a Dutch origin, uh, that name. Uh, Gloria asks, I am curious about the origin of sticky toffee pudding. I thought it was British, but it may in fact be Amish. Uh, no, according to what I've researched, um, sticky toffee pudding, in fact, originated in Lancashire. It was attributed to somebody in Lancashire back at the time, and I think the first known reference to it, or at least reference in terms of uh, it being a menu item, uh, was found in the Lake District in the 1970s. Uh, so when I read your question, I think in my head, again, I assumed it was from the Victorian age. So I was very excited to learn that it uh, emerged just uh, 10 years before I did onto this planet. Um, just like the word wanker, you know, which a lot of people have in the comments used. Uh, oh. Okay, down to three questions. The penultimate, penultimate question comes from Nancy Kelly. Uh, Nancy asks, explain the taste of Marmite for those of us who've never had it. I can't, Nancy. It's it's a secret uh, that we keep in It's not gross. Why do you do that every time? <laughs> every time this comes up, that's that's your two cents. Even Vegemite is gross. Vegemite, well, are the same thing, essentially. I know. You know different costs here in, in America um, when they're imported. Um, but they are, they're a yeast-based, um, you know, condiment? Not condiment, what's that uh, sure. thing? Spread. Spread, thank you, that you put on a sandwich or a twiglet. Twiglets are amazing. They're like a little stick crisp that you put in your mouth and eat, and, and it's crunchy. and that just tastes gross. Tastes amazing. <laughs> Uh, Arbitrary Exploration uh, asks, uh, is there any British food that you're not very fond of? We know that there is for you. Um, I really have enjoyed <laughs> learning more about Britain through your channel. I wasn't meant to read that bit, but hey, I like plugs. All right, uh, Arbitrary Exploration, AE, as I like to abbreviate you. Uh, is there any British food that I'm not very fond of? Uh, black pudding is a bit... Yeah, it's a bit iffy, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. And uh, and haggis as well. Haggis is um, lovely. Well, I'm jumping on the bandwagon because I've never actually had haggis. It just always sounds not great. Haggis is Proved actually very nice. Is it? It shouldn't be, but it is. I'll have. I'll try it then, and maybe I. I am open to new foods, so I will absolutely try. In fact, why don't we make it this weekend? No. It's a bad God, idea. I'm a pain in the ass. It is. Um, okay, final question today. Shirin Rose, or is it Shirin Rose? Uh, great name, either way. Uh, Shirin, Shirin Rose asks, what are mushy peas? Is it literally just mashed peas? Why is it so popular in the UK? To answer the last question first, I've no idea, but I love them. Salt. Uh, lots of salt. That's probably That's why I love why. them. Yes. Um, and they are, they're sort of, the peas in a kind of Pea peas. cream kind of They're thing. literally mashed peas, peas with salt. They, all right. I'm, I'm trying to make them sound better <laughs> than they are. I mean, they're but, all right, but they're mashed peas with salt. Dip your chips in them and you'll bloody love them. By chips, I do mean fries, you know. Um, although, actually, I, I've done this before. Uh, prawn cocktail crisps do actually go well with the pea of the mushy variety. So, that's that. You get um, salt on salt. Salt on salt action. Can't beat it, then join it. All right, thank you. This is uh, that's it for this episode of Ask a Brit. Join us next week when the topic will be Americanism. So keep your questions coming in and don't forget to use the hashtag Ask a Brit. Until next week, goodbye. 
Thank you for watching this episode of Ask a Brit. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and if you'd like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.